Hey, what you up to? Uh, just working on a big benchmark video for the RTX 2060. Mmm. Okay. Why? What's um, up? There's a bit of a problem, you know. I think few people think you should have compared the RX 570 with the 3 gigabyte GTX 1060 rather than the 1050 Ti. But the RX 570 is usually cheaper than the 1050 Ti at the moment. Yeah, 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 I know. But people are arguing that the 1060 3 gigabyte isn't that much more expensive and it's faster, so you cherry pick the comparison to make AMD look better. <laughs> All right, I'll retest to include the 3 gigabyte 1060 with the RX 570 and the GTX 1050 Ti. Mm, yeah, good idea. And just to cover your bases, because you know, these tests only take like five minutes, how about you also include the six gigabyte 1060 and the eight gigabyte RX 580? All right, leave it with me. Welcome back to the Harbour Unboxed. It is time to reevaluate the value of the Radeon RX 570 all over again, because apparently I didn't do it right the first time. I think a lot of people were caught out by the fact that the RX 570 is indeed cheaper than the GTX 1050 Ti right now. And I'll admit it's quite surprising given that the 570 walks all over the 1050 Ti, but that is the current situation. And really I should have made this comparison sooner, back when pricing uh, dropped back down to earth. During the mining crisis where gamers couldn't really get their hands on any kind of Radeon GPU, we turned to the 3 GB GTX 1060 as its limited memory buffer made it pretty much useless for any and all mining operations. This meant pricing held pretty steady and as a result it was the best value mid-range option for quite some time. Today though, the 3GB GTX 1060 is commonly found at or around the $200 US MSRP and at the time of making this video, the cheapest card on Newegg was priced at exactly $200 US and there were five options available at that price. The RX 570 on the other hand, there were three models priced at $150 US with multiple options available for the $170 US MSRP. Meanwhile, the GTX 1050 Ti, which recently got destroyed in a head-to-head -head comparison with the 570, costs $100. $170 US, though there is a model on sale for $155, but it's a very ordinary model with a pretty rubbish cooler. Another standout option right now, and perhaps the only real competition for the RX 570, is the RX 580. There's an 8GB power color model selling for just $180 US right now, with a few models priced at between $200 and $210 US. Meanwhile, the fully fledged 6GB 1060s typically cost around $240 to $250 US. Anyway, today we'll be comparing all of these GPUs in a 36 game battle at 1080p and 1440p to see how they compare in terms of performance and then of course cost per frame. As was the case last time, we're only going to discuss the results for a dozen of the games and then jump into our performance breakdown. As usual, our Corsair GPU test rig built inside the Crystal Series 570X has been used, and inside we have a Core i9-1900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3200 memory. As for the drivers, we're again using Adrenaline 2019 Edition 19.1.1 for the Radeon GPUs, and then the Game Ready 417.35 WHQL drivers for the GeForce GPUs. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's get into the results. Like last time, I'll be keeping the order of the graphics cards static, so they won't be ordered from slowest to fastest. I've also kept the red shadow for the Radeon GPUs, and then the green shadow for the NVIDIA GPUs. So starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see that the RX 570 is able to edge out the GTX 1060 3GB here, though the margin is very small. Meanwhile, the RX 580 is a good bit faster than the 6GB 1060, providing 9% more frames at 1080p. Next up we have Strange Brigade, and this is an amazingly well optimized game, and although it is an AMD sponsored title, it still works very well with Nvidia hardware. Here the RX 570 outpaced the 3GB GTX 1060 as well as the 6GB model, and then we have the GTX 1050 Ti trailing by a country mile. The RX 570 was just 6% slower than the RX 580, so a pretty good result there. Battlefield 5 is another game where these affordable Radeon GPUs stack up very well to the competition. The RX 580, for example, blitzed the 6GB 1060, while the RX 570 just managed to outpace the 3GB 1060 at 1080p, but did beat it quite comfortably at 1440p. Basically, the 570 was on par with the 6GB 1060 in this title. 
Sniper Elite 4 is another game where the Radeon GPUs do very well. Here the RX 570 matched the 1% low performance of the 3 gigabyte 1060 while beating it for the average frame rate. Quite convincingly at 1080p I might add. The RX 580 also beat the 6 gigabyte 1060 by a convincing margin and it was also 18% faster than the 570 at 1080p. I haven't said much about the GTX 1050 Ti for the last few games and well, probably not too much that needs to be said here. Performance in Monster Hunter World is extremely competitive between the RX 570, 580 and 1060 models. The 3 GB 1060 just edged out the RX 570 while the RX 580 just beat the 6 GB 1060. So bang for your buck, the 570 stacks up very well. Moving on to Warframe and we see at 1080p that the AMD GPUs enjoy slightly better frame time performance though the 1060s did provide the best average frame rates. Frame time performance did improve for the GeForce GPUs at 1440p and here the 3 gb 1060 beats the RX 570 by a pretty comfortable margin. The Just Cause 4 performance was also quite competitive, here the RX 570 and GTX 1060 3GB were basically neck and neck while the RX 580 was 7% faster than the 6GB 1060 when looking at the average frame rate. Grand Theft Auto 5 provided the RX 570 with its smallest win over the GTX 1050 Ti in our previous video, so it's no surprise to find the GTX 1060 pulling ahead here. Basically, even the 3GB version was able to beat the RX 580, though the frame time performance was much the same. This meant the 6GB 1060 was hands down the fastest GPU tested in this title. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is another title that doesn't work that well with AMD hardware, despite the fact that it is an AMD sponsored title. The RX 580 gets trounced by the 6 GB 1060, though having said that the 3 GB 1060 does struggle with some pretty ugly frame time results at 1440p and even 1080p. Moving on to the Hitman results, uh, here we find quite competitive performance. The 3 GB 1060 did edge ahead of the RX 570 at 1080p, though it also fell behind at 1440p. The RX 580 on the other hand was able to beat the 6 GB 1060 at 1080p, and it did so quite comfortably at 1440p. The Radeon GPUs have always done very well in Rainbow Six Siege, and here we see the RX 580 pretty well trashing the 6 GB GTX 1060, though the 3 GB model stacks up pretty well against the RX 570. Now, I should note that the ultra quality preset that I test with uses a render scale of 50. Not 50%, just 50. And what this means is 1920 by 1080 becomes 1360 by 764. The game uses temporal upscaling, so you end up with an image that's rescaled to the output resolution. Anyway, I used to test with these settings as this is the default option for the ultra quality preset, but quite a few Rainbow Six Siege players complained that our frame rates were too high, not realizing that they had manually configured these options and that the maximum in-game preset actually sets the render scale about 30% lower than the output resolution. Anyway, to keep the Rainbow Six players happy, I now select the ultra preset, then manually adjust the render scale to 100 each and every time. This makes the game an extreme VRAM user. At 1080p, the game calls for at least 6.5GB of memory, and this is the reason why the 3GB1060 and even the 4GB RX 570 get hit pretty hard here. It's not often that the 8GB RX 580 offers over 40% more performance than the 4GB RX 570 at 1080p. I did check these numbers quite a few times, but that is the situation here when using those settings. In the end, the RX 580 beats the 6GB 1060, while the 3GB 1060 and RX 570 are comparable across the two tested resolutions. The last game we're going to discuss the results for is World of Tanks, and here all GPUs performed very well at 1080p. That said, the GTX 1060 3 and 6GB models were able to quite easily beat the Radeon competition, particularly at 1080p. The 3 GB 1060, for example, was 22% faster than the RX 570, and this margin was reduced to just 16% at 1440p, so still a pretty solid win here for NVIDIA. Still, as I said, overall, the performance was still very good using either the Radeon or GTX 1060 series GPUs. Okay, so previously we found the Radeon RX 570 to be on average 43% faster than the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, when calculating the averages on a per game basis and then obviously averaging those figures by the number of games tested. But since I'm not comparing two GPUs head to head, but rather five GPUs, I won't calculate the same way, at least not for this initial look at performance. I'll show those uh, the game breakdown stuff a little later on. 
So I'm for now, I'm just simply going to take the FPS data from all the games, then average those figures. And this sees the RX 570 come out on top by a 41% margin. So there's a 1% to 2% uh, margin of error there, depending on which way we work the data out. Just, just a bit of a rounding error. The 3 GB GTX 1060 was on average 4% faster than the RX 570 across the 36 games tested, uh, giving it a 3 FPS advantage on average. Then we see a further 14% jump in performance to the RX 588 GB and GTX 1060 6 GB, both of which averaged 82 FPS across the 36 game sample. This made the 8 GB RX 580 on average 19% faster than the 4 GB RX 570, and this makes sense given that the RX 580 packs 13% more cores with an 8% core clock speed advantage. And on top of that, we saw a few instances where having twice the VRAM was also advantageous. Before moving on, here's a quick breakdown of how the RX 570 compares to the other GPUs tested on a per game basis. In the last video, we saw how it dominated the GTX 1050 Ti across all 36 games. And as I said earlier, when calculating the percentage difference per game, we end up with a 43% performance advantage in favor of the RX 570 due to a rounding error. Compared to the GTX 1063 gigabyte, the RX 570 was just 4% slower on average, and here you can clearly see where the Radeon GPU got the better of the 3 gigabyte 1060, and then of course where the GeForce GPU came out on top. The RX 570 enjoyed big wins in Forza Horizon 4 and Hitman, while it lost by a convincing margin in Total War Saga, GTA 5, and Fortnite. As you might expect, the performance deficit is extended when compared to the 6 GB GTX 1060. Here the RX 570 was 14% slower on average, and its only real win came in Strange Brigade. Then finally, we have a comparison with the RX 580, and here the 570 was 14% slower on average, and was for the most part between 10 and 16% slower. Right, so that's how they stack up across a wide range of games, and those are certainly the margins you can typically expect to see. The only question left to address now is, how do they stack up in terms of value? And to answer that one, we will be checking out some cost per frame figures. Please note the prices quoted here are in US dollars, and they were taken from Newegg. I ignored the absolute lowest price if there was just a single model available, and I believe this is an accurate and fair representation of the current market prices. So at a current retail price of $150, the RX 570 costs just $2.17 per frame, but even if we use the $170 MSRP, it still only comes out to $2.46 per frame, making it 11% cheaper than the 3 GB GTX 1060. The RX 580 is also exceptional value at the current $190 US asking price. It's just 6% more costly per frame than the RX 570 and an impressive 21% cheaper than the 6 GB GTX 1060. Then at the bottom of the graph, we see just how bad the GTX 1050 Ti is at the current asking price. At $170, it works out to be almost 60% more costly per frame than the RX 570. Just quickly, before wrapping up the cost per frame stuff, here is a look at prices down under. I realize only about 4% of those watching this video are fellow Australians, but looking at how the margins compare in a different region might interest more than just the Aussies. Interestingly, here in Australia, the RX 570 is even better value, at least relative to the competition. That said, there are only three retailers selling models for $200, and the rest seem to be more like $250. But even so, at that price, the 570 still only costs $3.62 per frame, making it 10% cheaper than the RX 580 and 3 GB GTX 1060. On that note, with a 3 GB 1060 and 8 GB RX 580 offering the same cost per frame, you'd surely be better off spending $40 more on the Radeon GPU for the simple fact that it comes with more than twice as much VRAM. So taking all that into account, we find that once again, if you're looking at spending well under $200 US on a graphics card, it is hard to go past those $150 RX 570s. And even here in Australia, there are some serious RX 570 bargains to be had. Unless Nvidia starts offering uh, retailers discounts, then there really isn't much point buying a GeForce graphics card if you have less than $300 US to spend. At this point in time, I'd really recommend avoiding the 3 GB 1060. Uh, the extremely limited VRAM buffer is already proving to be a bit of a problem and you can expect it to become even more of a problem as we move forward. Upcoming titles in 2019 are probably gonna give it a bit of a hard time, even at 1080p. And we see even four gigabytes really is right on the edge for budget graphics cards. And for this reason, I'd recommend snapping up an eight gigabyte RX 580. 
if you can stretch the budget. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Next, I promise I will have a 36 game GeForce RTX 2060 benchmark. And I have to say that one's looking a bit more impressive than I was expecting. So anyway, keep an eye out for that video. It won't be too long before it's on the channel. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content just like this. And if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our Discord chat and our monthly live streams. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.